Hey guys, welcome to another episode of 180 Brief. So glad that you guys could join us this week. Uh, tonight's guest speaker is Pastor Elizabeth McDonald herself. Uh, joining us all the way from beautiful um, Hinsdale. Yeah. <laughs> um, hang on a second. Traffic. <laughs> um, yes, I've actually restarted this video about six times now because I'm sitting in a spot that I wanted to be somewhat different, but it's also at the corner of uh, my house where the traffic all stops and honks and waves and stuff. But anyway, um, so Eli... Kyle and Michael, no longer the uh, the big men on the campus. They are now going to be starting over, starting fresh as freshmen, wherever they decide to go. Eli's case, it's Southern. Uh, Kyle's going to Valparaiso. Michael, I, I actually don't know. Um, moving away, starting new lives, new chapters in their lives. Um, they're not going to be the big guy, the big dogs. They are going to be freshmen. They're going to be going and seeing tons of people that they've never met before, uh, doing all kinds of new stuff, waving to people as they go by. And um, so, yeah, it's new opportunities, and you know they're going to be the new guys, and so it's. You know, it's going to be kind of weird starting over and now luckily for Eli, I don't know about the other two, but Eli, he's got a lot of friends that are going with him and there's a lot of friends already down there and his cousin McKenna's there. So it's not like he's going in blind and having to start too fresh, but he's still going to be the lowest man on the totem pole, kind of. But it's a new chapter, starting fresh, you know what I mean? So going down as freshmen, starting new and afresh, it's kind of how it is with God when we ask for forgiveness and you know, all the crap that we've done. And he kind of says, all right, reset button. And we start fresh with him. And that's, that's amazing because, you know, I know there's stuff that I've done in my life. I'm sure there's stuff that you've done in your life. And knowing that you can go to God and, you know, have him forgive you for your sins and hit the big reset. That's that's awesome. And so with the boys going their different directions in life and starting fresh, it's exciting. Just like when you're forgiven and uh, you know, knowing that you get to start over with God, that's exciting. So. Hope you're having an amazing day. Hope you remember to shoot out emails to 180hsdac at gmail.com if you have any prayer requests or anything else you want to tell us about to keep us in the loop so we can share with others. Let us know. Um, just want to thank you guys for joining us. Hope you have an amazing week. And just want to know that you are loved. All right, guys. Have a good one. Welcome to 180 Briefs. Hello 180 Church family, this is Pastor Elizabeth and I am so excited to be with you today as we study together. As you can tell, I'm not in the studio today, I'm at home actually in my plant room. As you can tell, I have a little bit of an absorption um, and that's just half of the room. <laughs> anyway, um, I have my little friend that my mom made me, my sloth in the background will be joining us. <laughs> but I hope that each of you are doing well and that you have enjoyed the weather that we've had this week. I know I have enjoyed the sunshine, um, not the humidity, but I've enjoyed the sunshine and it's been a little rainy and overcast and my West Coast heart has been soaking that weather in as well. So I hope that each of you are doing well and that you are enjoying the sunshine and all that life has to offer right now. Today we are going to be diving in to a basic fundamental of the Christian faith and I know that it's something that I'm sure each of you are very well known into it, um, but I think that it's something that I'm constantly needed to be reminded of. And so I just wanted to share it with you today. Let's pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you so much for the ability to be able to come together as a community to study your love, to, to study your word. And I just ask that you be with us right now as we come together in your name. Amen. A couple weeks ago when I preached for our main church service on our Hinsdale uh, YouTube page and, and Facebook, I talked about how John 3.16 is probably one of the most renowned Bible verses in all of Christianity. How John 3.16 is probably one of those Bible verses where even if you're a non-believer, you probably can recite it or at least you know it if somebody said it. You know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I mean, this is such a profound Bible verse, something that we know and that we sing songs about, that we memorize, that we probably could say in our sleep. You see, when I think of God's love, sometimes I think that I'm unworthy of it, <laughs> that I'm undeserving, that I don't deserve what he is giving me. And you know, honestly, I think that's true to most parts. But I think sometimes I'm needing to be reminded that despite my undeservingness, that he still loves me, that he still cares for me. And so that's what I want to share with you today is that in the midst of whatever you may be going through, in the midst of unknownness, in the midst of new um, chapters in your life, in the midst of maybe not feeling worthy enough, that God loves you so much that he is still taking care of you and he is placing you where he needs you to be. When I was a senior in college, I remember everyone talking about where they wanted to go right after college. Uh, you know, with a lot of jobs and stuff, you can really kind of take your pick on locations. However, when it comes to pastors, you kind of go wherever there's an opening. So, so many of our, uh, my fellow friends <laughs> took jobs in Colorado. Um, some took jobs in Texas. Some took jobs there in Lincoln, Nebraska or Kansas. And so it was always a journey of where we would end up. So when senior year came around, I started interviewing for the Minnesota conference. I was really nervous. I had never visited Minnesota before, um, but I loved that it was green, that it had bodies of water, even if they weren't oceans, um, and, and ended up working out pretty well there. However, there was lots of fears leading up to that. Was this where I wanted to end up as a West Coast gal myself? Um, I didn't know much about the Midwest other than visiting South Dakota and North Dakota and things of that nature. So and being in the Midwest was a, definitely a new territory for me, but I was definitely open to it of hearing where God wanted me to go. So recently I was rereading this book called Experiencing God. It's a book that I read my freshman year of college. So it's been about four, you know, I'm not going to do the math. Um, it's been a while since I've read this book. And so I started rereading it and it was, there's something that hit me here that really spoke about God's love and kind of ties in with my story of going to Minnesota and also even coming here. And it says on page 22, have you ever experienced somebody saying, I'm afraid to surrender my life totally to the Lord because he might send me to Africa as a missionary? Or have you ever been cautioned, don't say that or don't do that because sure enough, God will take you there or lead you to do that. You see, such, in, uh, such, such statements indicate a lack of trust and understanding of God's love. For he would not call you to be a missionary in Africa unless he knew such a, such a call was best for you. I know that many people who serve the Lord in dangerous and impoverished nations, and they would not, do, they would not change a thing. They would not go anywhere else. You see, their love for their adopted country and its people, and they know that God has given them and placed them in the perfect place because he loves them so much. 
You see, when I think of my journey of ministry, of even coming from uh, Portland to going to Lincoln, Nebraska, to coming from Lincoln, Nebraska to Minnesota, and even coming here to Illinois, to Hinsdale, to each and every single one of you, I've often thought, man, I'm so undeserving of these places. I don't deserve to be here. I'm, uh, I don't think I'm qualified enough, or I start doubting myself. And I read these, this verse and I read the, uh, not this verse, I read this paragraph of this book and it says that God places you in the per certain position and place and location in which you are it because he loves you. I'm going to continue reading. It says, one missionary couple came back to their home in the United States for a year with their two children before returning to Zimbabwe. Their schedule in the United States was so full and hurried that they declared, we can't wait to get back to Africa. We love African time. The place in Africa where they worked had no electricity. They would go to bed when it was dark and they would raise with the sun. When they would go to a village for a meeting, they had no schedule that drove them. Upon arrival, they would send word throughout the village by children. A crowd would gather and they would meet until they were finished. And the pace was far less stressful and fierce than uh, the schedule in America. You see, when you trust that God always gives you his best, you will devote your heart to whatever assignment God gives you because you know that that role, you can experience everything that God has in his heart for you. Those who are unhappy and distressed with God's assignments exhibit a lack of belief that God loves them and that his expressing of his love and his guidance for their life. Never allow your heart to question God's love. Settle it in the front of your quest in everything that you do that you may experience him, that he loves you. Every dealing he has with you is an expression of his love for you. God would not be God if he expressed himself in any other way than perfect love. What you believe about God's love for you will reflect how you relate to him and it will reflect in every action that you take. You see, the love that God has for you and I should be a direct uh, reaction and and an direct action of everything that we do. You see, God places us in certain situations and places and even jobs because he knows the bigger plan. I know that I've often had to be reminded of that in my walk and in my journey in life. And I know that some of you have made, may, are currently feeling that same thing is that God is not going to place you in any other place other than where you need to be because he loves you. That he expresses his love through how he is leading you in his life and that he will never not love you. Again, I know it's a basic fundamental, a basic thing that we all uh, know very well, but I think it's a lesson that we all need to be reminded of is that God is here with us and that God is leading our lives because he cares and loves for you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for all that you do. Lord, I ask that in anything that we may question and anything that we may do, I ask that you just be there, that you may lead us and guide us, and that we may be a reflection of you and your love in all that we do. In your name, amen. I hope that each of you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and a Memorial Day, and I hope to see you next time as well. Bye-bye.